Hey everybody, it's Mia, welcome back. And if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. So here lately, I've done some videos on things to declutter. I did 29 things that people often forget to declutter. I did part one and part two of 30 things to declutter before 2022. And one thing that you guys really wanted me to address is what to do with your discards and how to handle them responsibly. Now, there are a lot of concerns when it comes to discarding your items. Of course, we don't want to be just dumping all of our stuff at the landfills and throwing everything in the trash, right? At the same time, a lot of the donation centers have now started to become overrun with items specifically that they can't even sell, things with holes in them and stains and just stuff that they're not really able to take on or they're getting so much stuff that they're just not able to keep up with it, also leading to the landfills and costing the donation facilities in the process. So it's not always the best approach to just dump all of your stuff at a donation center either. So what are you supposed to do? Well, that's what we're talking about today, the most responsible and sustainable ways and methods of discarding your unusual used items. I have a lot of ideas and programs to share with you today, but first I want to give a huge thank you to Kinder Beauty for partnering with me on this project. To be honest, I have been approached by many beauty boxes and I always turn them down. I say, you know what, I'm not a beauty brand, this isn't what I do, but Kinder Beauty reached out to me around the time that I was creating my video on eco-minimalism and looking into sustainable brands, and I found it challenging to find sustainable and ethical brands because they're not just readily available. And so what I loved about Kinder when they reached out to me is that that's what they do. Kinder beauty boxes are filled with sustainable, cruelty-free, ethically produced, you know, environmentally friendly products that they ship to your door. It costs as little as $23 and you can get up to $165 worth of brands to try. All of their products are handpicked by co-owners Daniela Monet and Ivana Lynch, and a portion of all of their sales goes to environmental and social causes. You don't actually have to have a subscription in order to access this marketplace of clean products. So you can actually go and order any of the products directly from their marketplace. Although if you do use the three to six month subscription, you also get a bonus box that's worth $85 of stuff. So there's that. The first box that they send out, this is called Kinder's Faves Box. Box, and this is $122 worth of sustainable clean products. So the first thing that you're gonna get is this mermaid milk by Earth Harbor. You can see the really thick consistency and this is packed with spirulina, matcha, hyaluronic acid, and concentrated phytonutrients and antioxidants. You also get this Ultra Night Serum by Dirty Lamb. It's an oil consistency, but it's not greasy at all. And it has a high antioxidant blend of fatty acids. But what I really noticed is the aromatherapy properties because this oil has lavender, ylang ylang, and orange essential oils, all of these in here, which give it a really rich, earthy, sweet smell. This is an example of one of the accessories. This is what comes in the first box. It doesn't require any makeup remover or any soap at all. All you have to do is wet it and then the Microtech fibers absorb the makeup like a magnet. You'll also get these bright eye masks by the brand 100% Pure, full of this hydrogel that's 95% aloe water and 5% plant cellulose, and it's caffeinated, so it takes away the puff in your eyes. And then finally, you get this lip and cheek tint by Eco Lips. I've never thought about putting a cream on my cheek, it just sounds too cakey, but this one actually does not, and I'm really impressed with that. It adds just like a little, pinch of color. You guys know I don't like wearing just heavy makeup. And also it's clean makeup. So it's made out of jojoba oil and natural moisturizing elements that are good for your skin anyway. So if this sounds intriguing to you and you want to give it a try, I've got you covered with a link down in the description and using the code MIA50, M-I-A-5-0, will get you 50% off of your first order. So we've talked about responsible brands. Let's dive into responsible decluttering. The way I'm gonna share this is my order of operations when it comes to discarding and decluttering from the least harmful to there's not much else you can do about it. 
starting with number one, which is to repair or repurpose when it makes sense. For example, my youngest daughter, Gracie, has performed many a surgeries on Charlie's toys that have been ripped or torn apart in different ways. Charlie has a Charlie Brown stuffed animal that is not made for dogs. And so it has gotten many lacerations in the face and Gracie has sewn those up and Charlie's always really excited to get them back. But it, it allows the lifespan of these toys to last much longer and to essentially get a whole new life. I recently on the video for thrift shopping where I took you along thrift shopping with me, one of the shirts that I bought as soon as I ripped the tag off, which I'm not supposed to do and I did it the wrong way, it made a little hole in the shirt. So I immediately went and grabbed Gracie's little sewing kit, sewed up the hole. You can't even tell a difference. So things like that, if it's gonna be something that you could get a lot more use out of or that just is gonna take a small little repair, just go ahead and repair it and voila, then you don't even need to discard it. Also, a lot of people have tons of different really cool ideas when it comes to repurposing. I repurposed the decorations that you see behind me. These are like bottles that we had bought for our wedding that I've now put flowers in and they're part of our home decor. There are just so many different things that you can repurpose. For example, clothes that have holes or stains in them, you don't wanna donate those, but you don't necessarily have to trash them either because you can chop them up and use them as dusting rags. You can use them as dish rags, depending on their consistency. So in fact, one thing that I've started doing recently that you may have seen if you watch the channel is I've started using unpaper towels. Most of them are flannel. So if you have a flannel shirt, you could have re-rolled paper towels right there. The warning here, of course, is to not overdo it. Only reuse and repurpose things when it makes sense. You might find that you already have an overflowing amount of rags and you just don't need any more. Or, you know, like you've already held on to so many glass pickle jars from the pickles that you finished and you're running out of cabinet space. You know, at some point, even the reusing and repurposing can lead to excess clutter, which is the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish. Number two, I'm gonna to merge together, even though it could be seen as two separate things, and that is to sell or gift. And essentially the way that I'm looking at this is that it's a transfer of ownership in one way or another. Either there's an exchange of money or there isn't, but you're essentially giving this item to another person. So I wanted to merge these two together because recently when I went through decluttering my closet, which I have a video on here, I told you I was gonna tell you what I did with those clothes. And so there was a process, a little hierarchy that I went through in trying to decide what I wanted to do with some of the different items. First of all, I went to a thrift shop, which I think if you have a thrift shop in your area, then that is a great way to be able to give the clothes to somebody else and sell them at the same time. I, I used to love using the thrift shop in the small town that I grew up in. I was going to that place like every other day. And so they can be a really great way to feel like you're helping out the business, you're helping out yourself, because you're getting a little percentage of that back and you're helping out the people who are able to get clothes at a discounted price, win, win, win. But there are gonna be places that won't take your items or they're not in season or, you know, just it's not the types of brands that they want to accept. So for those clothes, I took pictures of them and I posted them for free on OfferUp. I could have put them up there for a price. Maybe you have items that are more expensive that you choose to put up there for a price. My way of thinking about it was I'm just trying to not overuse the donation facilities, but I was gonna just donate it anyway. You know, like I don't need money for these clothes. I just am not using them and I want somebody else to be able to use them. So I use OfferUp and I use Facebook Marketplace. There are tons of other apps out there that you can take a look at. So I wanted to show you, I ended up posting two small rugs. One of them was even slightly damaged, you can see in the picture. Um, I posted all of my clothes that you saw in some of the previous slides and a bunch of my daughter's clothes that she wasn't wearing anymore. I posted all of them in separate posts on OfferUp and I ended up getting 45 messages from people who wanted to come and pick up those things. It also has the added benefit of you not actually having to go anywhere. Plus, if those people care enough to A, pay for it, or B, drive all the way out to your house to pick them up, then they're much less likely to end up as waste. Those people are probably going to use or wear the items that they're coming to get. So it really does help to keep up the sustainability versus handing them off to a donation center, which may or may not be able to sell them or use them, and it may or may not end up in a landfill. Number three is to donate. 
Donating is by no means a bad thing to do, and it also doesn't always mean just bringing heaps and bags of your stuff to a donation drop-off center. There are so many different ways to donate. So I wanna go through some of the different categories of things that we might be wanting to donate and some of the things that I mentioned in those other videos that I pointed out earlier, because there are tons of places out there. Some of them are online. So let's go ahead and dive into some of those. If you're looking to donate your eyewear, for example, I would start with the place where you originally purchased the glasses, because a lot of those have donation or recycling programs right there in shop. But also Target Optical, Pearl Vision, and Lens Crafters all have a donation program where you can donate your glasses there. They send it over to one site and one site disperses it out to various Lions organizations. Somebody in the comments recommended to send towels and rags and unused things like that to animal shelters. And I remember us volunteering at a kitten facility in an animal shelter when we lived in Los Angeles. And we definitely did go through quite a few washcloths. It was a really adorable organization where you could feed the kittens with the bottles, but I digress. They will very likely be happy to take on some towels and rags. Of course, an easy and obvious donation spot for media items like books, movies, DVDs, all of that good stuff is gonna be your local library. Some libraries will have donation days or donation events. So you might wanna give them a call and see if they're open to accepting things like that all the time or if you need to just hold on to it until their next event. But that's definitely an easy way to get rid of media. And I've used the library for all of those things. Taking a road trip and you need audio books or whatever, you know, get them at the library. We've even rented DVDs before when the girls were little because I didn't want to keep a whole bunch of Disney, you know, Cinderella and Snow White and all of those all the time. But we would go to the library and we would rent them occasionally. So that could be a good place to donate, especially some of the old classic movies or books that you're holding on to. Five or six years ago, we did a big overhaul and let go of a lot of the stuff that we owned and we were actually moving from one apartment to another. And we had just bags and bags and furniture and all kinds of stuff. And so we did a little bit of research and I found the VVA, which stands for the Vietnam Veterans of America. And it was an online free thing where you could just like book it online. I didn't have to call anybody and schedule a time for them to come pick it up. I didn't even have to talk to anybody or be there. And then they came and they picked it up. And when we came back by at 930, the stuff was gone. So it can be really, really simple to donate, especially like if you have a lot of items like that to where you need to have a truck come and pick it up. There are ways to get it done. I don't want you to think that donating is a bad thing. I still think that donating is a great thing. It's convenient to the person who's letting go of their belongings and it's helpful to the facilities who are then helping people to get jobs or helping to take care of people in shelters or different charities, you know? So there's still so much good in donation centers. The only thing that you need to be mindful of is that you are only donating things that could actually be sold or be reused by somebody else, you know? Things that don't have stains on them or don't have holes in them or aren't completely worn to the point to where they're just super pilly and nobody's gonna wanna actually buy those because then they again just end up being sent to the landfill or unable to be sold by the facility, which is wasting their man hours. And you know, you don't want to be a burden just because you feel bad getting rid of your stuff in a different way. Uh, they all have some kind of a mission, some kind of a charity, and are doing some kind of good in the world. So if you have some really great items that could be reused, then by all means, take them over to your local donation center. Just make sure that you're not sending a bunch of stuff that is technically trash. And the number four is to recycle. And this doesn't always mean what first comes to mind either. I mean, to me, when I used to think of recycle, I would think of just, you know, the green bags that you take out to the recycle bin and you dump it in. But actually there are tons of different facilities that specialize in different types of recycling that aren't necessarily out of your way or any more difficult than running to a donation center. When it comes to clothing, there are a lot of different options. I would, first of all, look up textile recycling in your area just to see what kind of programs are local. I know, for example, here in Portland, we have tons of different recycling and upcycling programs that may or may not be available where you are. But places like North Face and H&M, they take recycled clothes. Patagonia will take back their own clothes. So that's another thing. You might want to check the brand, especially if you buy name brand clothes. A lot of those brands will recycle their own clothes 
clothes, or in Patagonia's case, they will resell used clothes. And so they actually have Patagonia worn, where you can go and you can purchase lightly used Patagonia clothes that had been returned. And then if you do a quick search, you can find all kinds of places that will shred clothes and turn them into insulation. For example, Blue Jeans Go Green is a place that will take blue jeans and shred them and turn them into insulation so that they can get used for other things. If you're looking to recycle undergarments, so bras, socks, underwear, it could be men's, kids, women's, tights, um, all of those can be recycled at Nikki.com, K-N-I-C-K-E-Y. It's like knickers. They recycle them into insulation, carpet padding, furniture batting. So that's a one-stop shop that you can go for that. That was actually a recommendation by somebody in the comments a couple of months back that I looked into and it's actually a pretty cool program. And then when it comes to shoes, Nike Grind will take back shoes and they break it down to its components and recycle them. Electronics and cords and technology and anything in the electronics field, to keep it super simple, if you have a Best Buy near you, you can donate all of those things at any Best Buy facility, but also Goodwill has an electronics donation center too. And they take things, I've got it pulled up here, uh, desktop computers, laptops, monitors, printers, scanners, hard drives, keyboards, mice, speakers, cords and cables, um, ink and toner cartridges, software, Xbox, webcams. So Goodwill also has an electronics recycling program. So either one of those places, which tend to be conveniently located near most people, are a viable option. What we do here at my house is we just keep a bag because throughout time, you're bound to have different cords that become obsolete or stop working. We had a charger cord stop working the other day. And so I just have a little bag where I toss all of the electronic pieces that we're no longer using or don't work. And when the bag gets full, we'll take it to Best Buy or to Goodwill. There are lots of places that accept batteries, but just to to keep it super simple, Office Depot and Radio Shack will take recycled, unused, or overused batteries. For scratched up pots and pans, take a look and see if you have any metal recycling facilities near you. Most places will have some kind of a metal recycling facility and they're able to melt and reuse the metal in many cases. When it comes to medicines, this is like such a hot topic. As I've mentioned in a couple of my decluttering videos about discarding your medicines. If you have old antibiotics that are years old, yes, of course, that means that you did not use them appropriately because you shouldn't have leftover antibiotics. But let's be real, sometimes we have leftover or expired or old medications. People got really up in arms about that, especially when I said that the FDA says on their website that it's okay to flush them, which is not something that I do. But that's something that they say there. Um, but a better way to go about it is to actually donate your medications to a drug take back kiosk or a drug take back location. So if you Google something in your area, if you Google drug take back, then it'll pull up where your local kiosks are and where your local um, recycling centers are. So CVS is one place. You can take your medications over to these kiosks, drop them off. They do ask that you remove the label with any personal information. Or a lot of pharmacies will also take them back to recycle themselves. So those are a couple of different options for when it comes to discarding or recycling your medications. TerraCycle and Garnier have partnered together to create a big recycling program for makeup, cosmetic packaging, hair care products, all of that. If you go to TerraCycle.com, then you can find out more. And basically you print off a free shipping label and you can ship them all of your recycled makeup, makeup cases, um, hair care products and stuff like that. I took a look at their map and they have locations all over the country, at least here in the US. And I think that they said it's gonna be an international program. So you might check your country as well if you're not in the US. I've also heard other YouTubers mention Origins that they have drop off facilities inside of different shopping malls like Macy's. So you might take a look at Origins as well. But if not that, then TerraCycle has tons of ways for you to be able to drop off makeup, hair care supplies, and cosmetic packaging. And once you've exhausted all of the other options, sometimes the best course of action is going to be to throw something in the trash. You don't want to donate something that is essentially trash that they're not going to be able to sell just because you feel bad about throwing it in the trash. You know, like just 
throw it in the trash yourself. There are things that just can't be reused, they can't be recycled, that do need to be thrown in the trash. And the best thing that you can do is just take something away from that, you know, like learn from the things that you've purchased that you haven't used, or, you know, that maybe ended up going to waste, and maybe you don't purchase that thing in the future. You know, some things, the trash is just gonna be the best option. Now, of course, this was in no way an exhaustive list of absolutely every place or program or facility that you can use to donate or to recycle your goods. That would have taken way too long. I tried to stay with the things that were like in the top, you know, percentage that were gonna be accessible to the most amount of people, but that doesn't mean that you can't share those ideas down in the comments. So if you have some really great ideas for where you like to donate some of these items or items that weren't even mentioned, I would love to hear those down in the comments. I always love getting ideas and sharing around these conversations. I've learned so many things even from you guys. So I would love to hear those down in the comments and I will catch you here next week.